Hi, I'm Gene Benson. I would like to make all general aviation pilots aware of what could possibly be considered to be the most dangerous part of any flight. That's the turn from base lag to final approach. Every year we find numerous serious, often fatal accidents that happen during the execution of that turn. Just to show a very few examples, we have a Cirrus SR-22 in North Carolina, Piper Cherokee 140 in Oklahoma, a Lance Air also in Oklahoma, and a Ramos light sport airplane in Arizona. There have been accidents while turning from base to final approach in virtually every make and model of airplane and involving pilots of every experience level. So let's take a look at what is arguably the most deadly turn in aviation, the turn from base leg to final approach. Let's look at the runway overshoot scenario as it typically develops, beginning with an unintentional stall. Accidental stalls have a nasty habit of developing into spins because they are frequently entered from uncoordinated flight. Here's a common formula for a stall spin accident. The airplane is overshooting the turn from base to final. Note that the pilot is applying left rudder pressure to bring the nose of the airplane around. The yoke is turned to the right in an effort to prevent overbanking. The turn coordinator indicates the skidding left turn. The increased drag produced by the skid results in decreased airspeed. If the pitch attitude is also increased to attempt to stretch the glide, an uncoordinated stall may occur and a spin may develop. Here we see an airplane in normal flight with neutral ailerons and neutral rudder. The rudder may be deflected if the pilot attempts to swing the nose around rather than executing a coordinated turn. This is a top view of the same situation. The left rudder input causes the left wing to retreat as compared to the right wing that is advancing. The left wing will momentarily have less lift due to its comparatively slower airspeed. This results in less lift on the left wing and a left roll develops. The pilot may interpret the roll as overbanking and may apply right aileron input. Now we have a cross control situation with the left rudder and right aileron. This is the same situation shown from behind. The resulting roll will change the angle of attack. The descending wing will have an increased angle of attack, while the ascending wing will have a decreased angle of attack. If the critical angle of attack is exceeded on the retreating descending wing, at least a partial stall may develop. The great difference in the amount of lift being generated between the two wings may result in a sharp roll. This is the classic cross control stall. It may or may not develop into a spin, but if it happens while turning from base to final, it may not be recoverable. So let's look at some mitigation strategies to help us be safer on the turn from base to final. First, become proficient in handling the airplane and remain proficient. I strongly recommend enlisting the services of a competent high standards CFI and participate in a recurrent training program. Never try to salvage a bad approach. If the approach is not working out, go around and try again. But since many accidents happen during the go around phase, maintain proficiency in the go around maneuver. And finally, Determine a maximum bank angle to use when in the traffic pattern. I like to use 30 degrees as my maximum when I am in a small general aviation airplane. If more bank angle is needed, then it's time to go around. So please visit my website, genebenson.com, where you can take free wings courses, read safety articles, join my mailing list to receive my free monthly safety publication, Vectors for Safety, and more. Also, please follow me on Twitter at Gene underscore Benson.